I think they got him. <laughs> whatever. His yeah, son. He supports all of his no, he's, 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 he's not a Okay. We're going to go ahead and call the special workshop meeting of Jackson City Council of Order. Uh, we have one item on the agenda for tonight. So you have a copy of the proposed agenda before you now, so I would entertain a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, good evening. It's a beautiful sunny day in Jacksonville, even though it rained most of the day. But it's good to be with you all and to discuss a topic which we will be discussing, I'm sure, on numerous occasions, and that's commercial garbage collection. This evening, what we'd like to do is go through a series of questions and updates uh, we will do this in PowerPoint. We will also make sure that this PowerPoint is loaded onto your computers so that you can study the analytical work that is in each of the discussion points. Since our last meeting, uh, we did as a staff, we met with representatives of waste management, two members are here today, as well as a representative of waste industries. The purpose of the meeting which occurred on February the 24th was to get their input regarding the potential bid documents. Both of these companies presented competitive bids when we bid this in January or February of 2014. Since that time, we have discussed with them potential concerns that they may have in the bid documents because when the document goes out, we would want it to be something that they are comfortable with that could ensure the very best bid. So what we did literally was to go through the 26-page document that we issued a year ago and went paragraph by paragraph and asked the staff or representatives of waste management, waste industries, to tell us their concerns or thoughts on specific points. <coughs> when you talk about providing the service of garbage collection, <laughs> commercial garbage collection, we would remind you that it is a service contract. There is no requirement under the law to actually bid. At this point, my monitor says, turn to the city attorney and ask him to verify that. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Okay. So we want you to be aware, you do not have to go for competitive bids. You could actually negotiate a contract with any one vendor or multiple vendors. There is also nothing in the laws of North Carolina that actually requires the city to provide this service whether we provide it directly or indirectly. Directly, of course, would be our personnel picking it up with our equipment. Indirectly would be us doing franchise, exclusive or non-exclusive. But there's nothing in the law that actually requires us. Once again, the note says, check with the city attorney to verify this. Yes, sir. Okay. There is also, in North Carolina law, the ability for you to do a free market approach if that is what you want. And we're going to be discussing the pros and cons of several of these items as we go through the presentation. We also had a user meeting. As you know, we had an ad hoc group that was identified. We asked them to come. We met uh, on February the 26th. The purpose was to get their input and suggestions. I monitored that meeting. Wally and Kerry did the conduct of the meeting. They did a good job. I can attest to you that it was not a sales pitch on the half of the city staff to convince the merchants one way or the other. It was to gain information. I think it was an objective meeting. The presentation tonight, we would like to talk with you about collection alternatives, some pros and cons, bid document issues that come out of our conversations with the two uh, vendors who did give us bids a year ago. We want to talk to you about billing and collecting <coughs> pros and cons the ad hoc user committees uh, or groups thought, and then share with you what management believes are some recommendations and a potential action plan to lead us for the next several, several months. When you look at collection, it really comes down to three simple things. Cities in the business, directly. That means the city is providing the service, the city is doing the billing and collecting, the city does the whole package. Second is franchise, and franchise can be done either exclusive or non-exclusive. An exclusive franchise is what we currently have. 
And I'm going to ask John to talk with you about the difference between, and these are not the pros and cons, but legally, what are the differences between an exclusive franchise and a non-exclusive franchise? Well, in either of those circumstances, if you want to just do exclusive, then you're dealing with one vendor. And you would allow, and again, under the laws of the state of North Carolina, you can um, have one vendor and make an exclusive service, and they are the, and that's basically what we thought we had before when waste management was doing it. And they get exclusivity as far as all of the commercial garbage uh, that is picked up that we're talking about tonight. We know there's some big boxes that we're not talking about, like the Walmarts and those kind of compactors. <coughs> the non-exclusive is where you say, we want to make this more open and you let it be open to more than one vendor. Here you could have, we talk about the two vendors we've talked about, or Richard's talked about, the waste management and waste industry. You could <coughs> give one a portion of the city, another another portion of the city, or you could leave it up and say these are the only two that are licensed to come and do business in the city of Jacksonville. You, uh, commercial customers, decide which one you'd like to use according to the contracts that we would and the franchises that we would or the council would, would give to them. And then, of course, the free market system, as we've discussed before, several cities have that where the city is not involved directly or indirectly. It's up to each business, and we'll be talking about the pros and cons. Let's look at the pros and cons of the city providing the service, which would obviously mean that if we're providing the service, we continue with billing and collecting. Now, I will say to you, no list of pros and cons is 100% complete. Some of the things that I may see as a pro, you may see as a con. Some of the things that you see as a con may be, in fact, pros. One of the things we know is the quality of service. If you're in the business, it's up to you to determine the quality of service and to make sure that you deliver that. And I believe that you will agree that Kerry and his folks have, in fact, been delivering quality service. The second thing is, if you're in the business, you manage the personnel. You hire them, you train them, you make sure that they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. You're also responsible for missed services. So you're over, you have control over how those missed services are going to be handled. You also, by us being in the business, we have a backup plan so that when trucks are down, how are we going to handle those? We also have the fact that the city establishes the accounts so that when you, know, when you have uh, a new business come into the city, when they come in and set up their water and other services with us, we set up the whole account at one time. Collections are guaranteed. And as you know, the reason why they're guaranteed is because they're tied to your water bill. If you don't pay the bill, you don't get water. And there are not very many people who can stay in business without water. The rates are controlled by the city. Now that can certainly be one that's a pro, it's one that's a con. But the rates are controlled by the city. There's an offset for billing and collecting. While it's a nominal offset, we know that the staff down in the water billing department, when they put together a utility bill, they are in fact covering part of that cost is recovered from the commercial garbage to offset their cost. Recycling is a priority. Now, once again, when you think of recycling, we have to not only think about the fact that we are keeping the recycling concept, but we also have to remember that the landfill out there has a finite capacity. Everything we can keep out of the landfill, you will in fact extend the life of that landfill. I have heard it said, cannot verify it's true, that there will never be another landfill permitted in the state of North Carolina east of I-95. Whether that's true or not, let's just assume for the moment that you could build another landfill here in Onslow County. They are not cheap. So anything we can do to make recycling a priority that helps us in the long term as taxpayers. The appearance of the equipment, that's something that's under our control. The city audits the routes and the service. And of course, as you saw in an email that I sent you a week or so ago, the city does collect the landfill fee. And as you know, there is, because of the way we calculate it, that gives a certain surplus that helps us offset the cost for residential collection. 
emergency service option. The more equipment we have, the more ability we are able to clean the city after a hurricane. Now, I would say to you, I hope that option never comes our way, but we never know when one will. There are also some very real cons. The first con is the one that has stared us straight in the face, and that is the fact that all cost of the service falls on us. We must cover any shortfall. And right now, as you know, we're projecting about a $250,000 shortfall for the year. While personnel is a pro, personnel issues are a con. When people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, life's great. When people are not doing what they're supposed to do, if we're in the business, we're responsible for taking care of the personnel management. Fleet maintenance. Again, it is part of the fact that if you own it, you have to maintain it. Workers' compensation claims. We know that one of the issues we had this year was a very unfortunate accident. It injured an employee. The employee was out for an extended time. That was one of the issues that impacted overhead over time. Employee time and account setup. What that means is not only do we have the employees that, that have to pick up the routes, but we're also responsible for making sure that they get training while they're not doing their routes. So it's not, you know, 100% that they're working all the time. And, of course, we have to set up their personnel files and we have the benefits. Billing and collecting, it is a con, just as it is a pro. There's a pro side, they pay us money. The con side is that every moment that is spent on a commercial issue is a moment somebody is spending on what? A commercial issue. Rate adjustments. Just as you have to look and have over the years looked at anything having to do with fees, if we're in the business, at the end of the day, it's the mayor and council who have to vote on what those rates are going to be. And that can be very unpleasant sometimes, and that is certainly in my opinion, a con. Insurance claims for damages. When you have a wreck, we process the claim. When our truck hits someone's dumpster gate and dislodges it, we process the claim. And that has an impact on our insurance. Painting the cabs. That may sound like a small thing, but I'm going to tell you, because we load these trucks from the front. As we load them, a lot of discharge comes from the containers, and our cabs are not necessarily the most attractive cabs. They're not to the standard that I think you want or I want for any of our city equipment. And then, of course, the city manages the system, and that takes time. And then, of all of the cons, it's the unknown. You know, it's just like buying a, a used Chevrolet. Now, if you bought a used Ford, I suppose that there'd be unknowns there also. But at the end of the day, that is some pros and that's some cons to us being in the business. Again, I'm sure each of you could add several pros and several cons, and I'm going to ask you to try to do that over the next several weeks. <coughs> Let's look at franchising, and this is going to be broken up into two parts, exclusive and non-exclusive. Exclusive, of course, as John said, means that you go out for a bid or you go direct negotiate, but whomever you're giving the service to, they're the only authorized vendor who's going to provide that service. One of the pros is once you award that contract, all costs are on somebody else. The rates are fixed to the customers. Because when you award that bid, you are going to award a contract that says for X number of years, here's what the bid is, and here's the conditions under which that price per tip can be changed. So the fixed rate to the customer. One of the biggest pros is this. The vendor is responsible for everything. They're responsible for personnel, equipment, repairs, fuel, route management. One of the other advantages is you are getting bulk purchasing. And what that means is that instead of each individual business going out and negotiating a price with the vendor, you're basically saying, 
we have, pick a number, 850 accounts in the city. We want you to give us a bulk price every time you dump that. The rates are set by the city council. They're not set by the free market. Competition for bid and service. The level of recycling is a priority, meaning once again, if you're setting the franchise terms, if you're setting the bid terms, you can determine the level of recycling that you want the city to have. What are some of the cons? Well, one is you don't have really direct control over the quality of service. Another, customer complaints. Because you're in the franchise business, the customer does not complain to the vendor. They complain to the city who in turn works with the vendor. Will the franchise holder have a backup plan? Well, if they do, it's their responsibility to implement. The city's not involved in it. And the city is responsible, but, you know, it, it's kind of like a lot of things in life. You're responsible, but did you really have any control over it? One of the cons, of course, is just as it's a pro, the council does set the rate. Management of the contract is still a staff function. It requires time. We have to determine how we assess penalties and is it an issue of cost versus service. Damage claims. A lot of times we get involved in trying to settle the damage claim as to whether the gate was damaged by the truck or by some other cause. Level of collection equipment. Just a minute, back to the damage claims. We get involved even though we, we contract that out, don't they carry their own insurance for that sort of thing? Yes, but we get involved in negotiating with the, with the customer as to whether the damage was really something that they, that the carrier is responsible for. Let me give you an example. There was a time, we don't allow it anymore, there was a time when we allowed basically, I guess they were fiberglass or plastic containers. The side of the container is called a sleeve, and that's what the rods of the commercial truck go in to pick it up. If there's too much water or too much weight in that container, in time, those fiberglass or plastic containers, that sleeve will break. Or if gates are damaged in opening and closing. And of course, again, while we have had quality uh, service and, and waste management did this uh, you know, in a quality fashion, we still have to get involved in negotiating, did they actually damage that? Or is it because it wasn't put in right or your employee damaged it or some car hit it? So in the end, if it is their claim, and then the vendor would pay that claim. The level of collection equipment, whether you have five trucks or two trucks, that's not really up to us to say if you're on a franchise. The level of recycling priority, it is a pro, it's also a con. Limited emergency services, again, in case of a hurricane, I'm sure that waste management or waste industries would assist us, but not the same way we would. On a non-exclusive, you have competition between vendors as one of the pros. And as John said, on a non-exclusive, you can set that up in several ways. I don't believe Jacksonville is large enough to set it up this way, but some of the larger cities will say, we're giving this company a, a, a franchise for the south part of town and this company a franchise for the north part of town. What we would look at is to say, okay, waste industries, waste management, ABC pickup, we're gonna give you a non-exclusive franchise, which means we're gonna set the terms, and then you can go out and compete for business. And let me give you a further example there. <coughs> Let's say that we go out for bids in a couple of weeks and it's non-exclusive. And company A says we'll pick it up for $6, Company B says we'll pick it up for $7. Okay, we can let both of them go out and figure out how many customers they can select. Because there may be someone who wants to pay the $7 rate because of some other benefit that that company is giving. 
maybe through rental of the unit or something like that. All of the other pros on the exclusive side, I think, would also fall here. On the con side, the rates may actually be higher. Why is that? Right now, we have roughly, well, no need to say roughly. Carrie, how many accounts do we have? Uh, 864. 864. If you divide the pie, then what that tells the person is, I don't actually have as many guaranteed customers. So what they may say is, if it's non-exclusive, my rate is here, whereas if it was exclusive, my rate was here, meaning lower. Also, possible customer confusion. Uh, I think back on the fact that we had not been in the business ourselves more than a couple of weeks when Mr. Bittner called me one morning and he said, uh, I just saw a commercial truck coming out from behind a business here in Jacksonville. Why would they be doing that? I thought we were supposed to be picking those accounts up. And I said, well, Mr. Bittner, I actually don't know why they were there. We'll find out. Well, it turns out that that particular customer had a recycling account with the private vendor. Because as you know, under the law, while we can control certain parts of garbage, we cannot control what somebody wants to do with their recyclables. So in that particular case, if you do have multiple vendors, sometimes somebody may call and say, Company A is servicing when in fact it's Company B. Not a big issue. Displacement, let's talk about that. If you're in a non-exclusive situation and you ever want to go exclusive, that means that one of those companies servicing some of your customers is no longer going to be allowed to do that. As you know, when we got into business, we had to address displacement. Displacement law, I don't remember by heart, John, but I believe it's an 18 18 month, month. Yes, sir. Okay, an 18 month period. Or money. Or money. <clears throat> In our case, we were able to work out with the vendor what an issue. But if you go with non exclusive and you ever decide to go back to exclusive, you will have to give the vendor who is being displaced an 18 month time period to work in your community unless they voluntarily avoid that. There also could be additional vehicles on the street and of course all the cons. Those are the pros and cons for the non-exclusive. Let's look at the free market system. There are larger cities that have the free market well, question. system. Yes sir. I think John said that if you had a free market non-exclusive the city would still license the franchises. There's three things, exclusive mm -hmm. franchise, non-exclusive franchise, and free market. So we're on the third one now, but the non-exclusive franchise is where you have more than one vendor and they each have a license, as, as Richard explained. Grant, a license granted by who? The city? The, city, the, city. the franchise. That's and what, what would the criteria be for granting a license? It would be whatever you... Financial or what? Well, first of all... As, say, say, say Tony wants to come in here. Tony's got two trucks and... He wants a part of the action. Are you going to license him or not? What I have been told, and I've not researched this, but by not but by Waste Industries, the lady from Waste Industries, or maybe it was you, Chip, that told us, but basically that you had to allow all folks that wanted to participate to participate, but that you set up criteria, and if they couldn't meet them, then you could take away their franchise. Now, whether you could do that ex excluding them beforehand, I would have to research further. <clears throat> Let me also uh, clarify one additional point. Free market means that you're not licensing them at all. Right. If you think of the fact that, uh, you know, although for many years Gwen cut the grass at my house, not too many years ago she told me she wasn't gonna do that anymore. So I had a choice to cut my own grass or to go hire anyone that would cut my grass. In that case, I could pick any vendor that I wanted to. Riding lawnmower, push lawnmower, push real mower, somebody with clippers, I could do anything I wanted. So when you think of the free market system, think of that as completely free, that the city has no role in it at all. This way Lazarus Pizza can say, I'm going to empty my own garbage, or I'm going to hire Waste Industries, Waste Management, Pink Lady, and believe me, there is a company in Wilmington called Pink Lady. But this means the city is totally not a player. Well, you say that, but we're still, and I mentioned it, the health, safety, and welfare clause. 
we could still be involved in terms of enforcing standards of health, garbage accumula accumulation, accumulation, and so on. Absolutely, and you will see that as one of the cons of this. Okay. The market fixes the rates. Council doesn't have anything to do with it. The customer is in control, competition <clears throat> of vendors. The cons is city's not a player. The rate is set by the market. No bulk purchasing benefit, quality control, code enforcement. That's the one Mr. Bittner just mentioned. If a person doesn't have his garbage picked up now, we have the ability to go to them and say, under our current system, you have to have your garbage picked up. It's a law. The free market, we can say the same thing. How do you enforce it in the free market? You send Gary Olet and the code enforcement folks out there, and they have to issue citations. The problem is the state law under any citation gives them how many days, John, to comply? I think it's 30. 30 days. <clears throat> you know, that's one of the real drawbacks from the free market system is the fact that if you have a bad business, and fortunately we don't have very many, your ability to address the issue. Let me also give you one other. We had an apartment complex that was small that went out of business. Actually, they went bankrupt. People were still living in that apartment complex. There was no one to evict them. There was no one to pay their bills. Because we were in the business, the city has been in there picking up their garbage and we worked out a payment plan where those people are in fact paying us as individual residents of that account. So if you're not in the business directly or indirectly, then you could have a situation like that where a business closes, the garbage can is completely full, no one's there to pick it up. Not gonna happen every day, we're just pointing that out. Displacement issue is one that we would really be concerned about though is this. We talked about it a while ago. If you have a free market system and then you go back to an exclusive franchise or a non-exclusive franchise or the city <laughs> servicing, then you have many people that you have to work with on displacement. Not available for emergency, additional trucks on the street, loss of revenue. Staff, landfill offset. Those are some pros and cons for you to think about on whether we should be in the business directly, indirectly, or not in the business at all. Here's some of the key document issues, and I really would appreciate some discussion as we go through these, because the bid document needs to reflect what you want as far as the level of service. So here are some questions we're gonna ask you. You know, first of all, franchise versus free market system. Now, when I say franchise, this is assuming that we are going to go out for bids. I think the first question I'd like to get off the table is, are you interested in just simply turning this over to the free market system rather than being involved in it either directly or indirectly? And if you're not interested in discussing that tonight, that is something we need some direction on at a point in time. So think about that a moment. As we talk about franchise, exclusive or non-exclusive, and then one of the real issues that we're gonna talk about with pros and cons in a minute is billing and collecting, city versus vendor. <clears throat> On the billing and collecting, we're gonna come back to that, recycling pickup. One of the things that's in our current bid document is a statement that says that recycling is mandatory for the contractor to pick up if the customer wants it. It doesn't say that the customer is mandated to have recycling. What it says is that if you are bidding on this document, you must pick up our recycling. One of the problems there is this. The last bid document said that if you get this bid, you, the vendor, are responsible for providing the containers. Now let's talk about what that said. 
864 accounts, Carrie? Yes. And how many uh, recycling customers do we currently have on containers? On the rollout containers? Uh, no, no, on dumpsters. 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 We have 64. We have 64. We have 64. On the dumpsters, but the 864 includes more than dumpsters, or is that all just dumpsters? No, no we have 864 customers. We have 64 of those customers that are collected by dumpsters. Recycling and, dumpsters. Recycling dumpsters. And then we have about 220 customers that we collect through the rollout system, the rollout containers. Yes. But here's the, the document said that as a vendor, anybody who wants a recycling container, the vendor has to has to provide it. Those recycling containers cost six hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. What's the price? Okay, for the dumpsters you now that the prices differ because of the size. If you're talking about an eight cubic yard dumpster, you're looking at about seven hundred and forty three dollars for them. We purchased through our last vendor. Uh, six yard is a little bit less, and then you go down. But we're looking at about seven hundred and forty three dollars per container. Both vendors, waste management, waste industries, both have said. This puts us at a tremendous exposure because if you're saying to us, anybody who wants it, we, the vendor, have to provide that container. Maybe an option in the document is to say this, that the city will provide the recycling container or the customer must provide the recycling container or as a vendor, you're only exposed to adding, pick a number, 15 new containers a year. What that does is it gives the vendor, it gives the bidder an ability to project their liability. But I think you can appreciate that if you know that, that you are exposed completely and one year you have 200 new people who want a recycling, you know, that could cost you $100,000 that you hadn't planned on. This may be the reason why they, uh, the last uh, vendor did not aggressively go out and try to try to build up the the, re the recycling. Yeah, customers. that was exactly right. What's, think what's the state things. law require of us, if anything, in terms of recycling? Kerry, can you answer it that? It doesn't require us to do anything. There are certain items that are banned from the landfill <coughs> that we have to adhere to, like the plastic bottles and pallets and so right. forth. But um, the, the state the state does not mandate recycling except for the ABC, ABC dealers. Right. Uh, yeah. Other than that, uh, an individual business does not have to recycle if they don't want to. Well, it's a while back, but I recall when the state enacted recycling that they set, I believe, goals without any penalty that each municipality must try to attain in terms of recycling. Yes, sir, and that's technically still in effect, but it's not enforced because they have not met those goals. They've not met those goals for the last 10, 10 years. It's part of this, the county's waste management plan? That's correct, sir. I think if we want to encourage recycling, which I believe we should encourage recycling, we should, and, and if we want a competitive bid that is reasonable, you have to reduce the exposure on this item. And I think that the better way to do it is to say that the vendor will be responsible for X number, a maximum number per year, and it has to be a reasonably low number. Or that the city, because we support recycling, the city will provide that dumpster. In talking to some of the customers, one of the things they will tell you real quickly is they have no interest in owning a container and they're not going to pay $600, $700, $800 to buy a recycling container. They just, that's, that's the feedback that we're getting. So on this, again, you know, for waste industries, waste management, Pink Lady, ABC, whomever, this is a point that we're going to recommend to you that we reduce that exposure in those bid documents. Does anybody have any objections to us doing that? Do you think it's a bad idea? Well, just, what are we gonna just for clarification, what does the county do in terms of commercial garbage pickup and recycling? I believe the answer is free market system, but Kerry, can you answer that? Yes, sir. I think, I think as everyone knows, the county, they do have drop-off sites mm -hmm. that, um, that they provide for the, for the customers. Um, as far as the commercial recycling is concerned, 
I, I think the commercial side recycling is open for just as the res residential is. If you, you have the material, you can take it to the landfill if you want. But there's no, again, there's no mandatory requirement from the county for the businesses to do recycling either. But it must be a free market system. You do see yes, sir. garbage trucks out there in the county doing residential pickups. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, there's different companies doing that. So it's, you we have to come assume in. it's a free market then out there? I used to live in the county, and in our neighborhood alone, Glad to see I know that there was, yourself. that's right, there was, we had Ray's, um, A1 Sanitation, Waste Management, all three of those picked up in our neighborhood. Those were recycling, um, but it was, it was recycling and residential pickup, and can't comment on others. I had A1 Sanitation at the time I had it. It was $22 a month, and I got one day a week rollout. 96 gallon container and one day a week bin recycling and on commercial i think there we're is. all in agreement commercial is free market that's uh, right but I, I i will turn to chip if she doesn't mind is that correct from your as a vendor <coughs> okay but if you want to recycle as a business you so, basically arrange for that service and pay for it i think a lot of the excuse me i think a lot of the businesses that are recycling are doing the cardboard recycling I think Chip might attest to that. That's primarily what they're doing. That's correct. And the, usually the, the biggest benefit of the recycling program is the rebates that the, the companies will offer the businesses for the cardboard. Since it is a commodity, it'll, it'll, it'll yield um, whatever rebate you decide with the, uh, the vendor in your contract. So. Do we have a question? Yes, sir. Under the scenario of an exclusive franchise with mandatory recycling <coughs> in the contract, what would we do with the dumpsters that we currently have? If we are out of the business, one of the things we could do is offer to sell them to whomever the vendor is. We could also continue to supply those because we believe in recycling. Or you could simply try to sell them, you know, they're all brand new. I believe we have, what, 60 or so out there now? Yes, sir. There, well, <coughs> actually, there's, there's more than that. We, we've had 60 that are out there, 64, I'm sorry, that are for recycling. We do have some that we have out there. I think it's three or four that the customer is, um, they're, they're, I mean, we've put them out for the recycling, but we're not, they have been designated as that. We got the one over on Gum Branch that we're doing. So we do have a couple of three of those that we're doing with that. Okay. I was just thinking that through. And in that manner, we would control the cost that the private company would incur, at least for that supply. And of course, one thing you could do, I'm not saying that it's a good idea or a bad idea. One thing you could do is simply say in your bid document, all we're asking you to do is pick up the garbage. The city is going to stay in the recycling business. We'll pick up the recycling container. We'll provide them. We'll provide the service. And you can even say, you know, we'll charge a fee for it. What we do know, though, is this. Any significant fee for recycling is going to discourage people from recycling. Is there a uh, limitation on some of the businesses not having the space on their property for an extra recycling or an extra dumpster? Is Absolutely. That an issue? Uh, it is definitely an issue. Anytime that you have built, which we do require, the Unified Development Ordinance requires corrals, as we call them, or enclosures. When you build that, you're assuming that you're having a certain number of containers. And we do know that several of our businesses would like to have recycling, but they don't want to have it sitting outside and their corral is too small to put another container in. So that becomes an issue. Another issue is the bond requirement. This past bid, it said you had to have a performance bond of $400,000. We discussed earlier how do you, how do you uh, make sure that an unqualified person or company doesn't get into the business. The purpose of a performance bond is exactly that, to guarantee performance. However, performance bonds uh, are very difficult to collect and they're not timely. So let's say for discussion purposes, we did send it out to bid and whomever got the bid for whatever reason went out of business. 
it's not like the next morning that performance bond is suddenly delivered to you in the term of four hundred thousand dollars even if you could find trucks immediately available both of the larger companies waste industries and waste management have said that they do not believe a performance bond is necessary that it's just an additional cost and that because of the size of their companies they should not we should not ask for a performance bond. Really what we should do instead are put standards in the bid document that say they're almost like pre-qualification standards. You must show you've been in the business for at least five years. You must show that you're financially solvent. You must show, you must show, you must show. Interestingly enough, we had most of that language in our bid documents a year ago. So this is one that I can tell you that Personally, I don't feel that there is a need for a bond requirement, especially if you have in the bid documents what I'll call standards that someone must meet to show that they are qualified to do the work. And I will say this, if either waste management or waste industries goes under in this country, we're going to have a whole lot more to worry about than picking up garbage. So. We could, as I said, pre-qualify the bidders. What about the terms and extensions? Our last bid document said five years, and it had two one-year extensions that had to be approved by city council. Now, I will say to you, both of the larger companies said they would love to have seven years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Personally, I think if you're going to bid it a five-year term and two one-year extensions, each approved by council, is still a reasonable way. Anybody object to that? Cost of living adjustment. Let me get all of these up here. The previous contract said that an annual adjustment could be requested using the consumer price index and city council had to approve it. There is a little different way to do that and that's to say that you are automatically guaranteed a certain percent for this discussion I put in one percent that you automatically get each year we know things get more expensive health care fuel whatever but if you want anything over one percent it has to come back to city council and then of course the other is that it's just simply a fixed fee for five years or you can do what some cities have done and that is this part is fixed if you want fuel adjustments because of the volatility of fuel that has to come back to council something for you to again think about service level current contract says twice per week Some people tell us they don't need twice a week. Some people tell us they need five times a week. One of the disadvantages of not having a minimum service level is it makes it difficult for the bidders to know how many pickups they can actually count on. In this particular area, I think we should put down that the service days are Monday through Saturday. We have enough commercial accounts now to have Saturday service. Now that doesn't mean that an office gets to select Saturday service, but restaurants need Saturday service. Under our old bid system, under our old franchise, if you wanted Saturday service, you negotiated that with the vendor, any vendor you wanted. And believe me, the prices they were being charged were substantial. This, this, uh, the, going back to that uh, on the Saturday service, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some high volume businesses that you deal with, restaurants mainly, that do require some Saturday service, but um, it just seems to me like uh, if the days were maybe scheduled out better, you know, like on Fridays versus, I know it costs more money to run people on Saturday, wouldn't it be easier to do that? Well, the, what we find is our heaviest routes are Monday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people in Jacksonville 
most people eat out at least you know once a month so we find that if you're not dumped on Friday or even if you are dumped on Friday a lot of those containers are already full by Saturday night because of the huge business so we're not saying that people have to have Saturday service what we're saying though for those businesses that need Saturday service I would recommend to you that the bid document require a fixed price for that Saturday service where it's not a gouging price if I can use that term but I'm going to yield to Carrie to how, how have we been handling it since we picked it up last July as far as Saturday service sir we've got 13 customers that we do Saturday service for and there's about 20 cans so most of those customers have at least three days a week service and and most of those businesses those restaurants are, are high volume restaurants and the majority well all of those uh ones that we collect on saturday are restaurants but what we charge we do charge a a surcharge for saturday pickup but what we're being told is that our surcharge rate which covers all of our overtime and everything is not even half of what they were being charged when the free market was charging them for Saturday service. There's two variables involved here in terms of the minimum of two per, two per week. In other words, I have, if I'm going to have two pickups per week, I'm then going to choose that size container that's going to minimize my cost, right? Yes, sir. Now, is it possible that some businesses, based on our experience, could get by with one pickup per week with a larger size container and save the vendor, whether it's a city or waste manager or whoever, from making an extra trip, which is expensive in terms of wear and tear on equipment? You're, you're absolutely right, sir. The only, the only thing that I see, and, and waste management maybe can correct me if I'm wrong, the only thing I see is when you begin to reduce the number of, of customers that you have as far as service is concerned, that's going to affect the bottom line as far as pricing is concerned. Um, and you can, like you, like you said, go to a, a smaller can. But I think if you talk about exclusive contract and even if you talk about a non-exclusive contract, <coughs> some of, what a vendor wants is to wants to have a specific amount of customers they know that they can count on and they can generate revenue on. Uh, if we if we reduce that number, then that's going to affect the bottom line. Also, it's going to also affect your bottom line in terms of expenses. That's exactly right, sir. <clears throat> but you're also going to see that individuals that migrate to once a week pickup are also going to be the ones that are going to call in and ask you about additional pickups because we're going to migrate to once a, once a week pickups because it's less expensive in order to save money. But you may need additional pickups and and that what that does is that causes us to, to start adjusting our schedule and using fuel and gas to get to that customer that that asked for that additional pickup so you it's it's kind of a six and one and a half dozen in the other you can it, it's fine to reduce that that collection to once a week but you may get into a situation where that customer hey they need that additional pickup. I'm not saying reduce it to once a week across the board, yep. I'm saying based on experience, we should know what businesses we can get by with once a week, which require five days a week, which require Saturday service, all of which in terms of a formula allows for the least cost to the consumer and the least operating cost for the person providing the service. And we can certainly, we can certainly go through the customers and find that out. That would, that would be no problem. Uh, miss service. One of the things that we have also been told is that I apologize. One of the things I've been told is I can't use computers, so Gail doesn't let me do finance numbers anymore, and Ron won't let me run computers anymore. So uh, the last structure that we had had a set of tiers. The more missed customers, the more you got fined. Uh, we're going to have to try to simplify this. We're not quite sure how we're going to do it. But there has to be a financial impact for not completing the rounds. So we're just saying to you that we're going to be looking at how we massage this part of the contract. Let's talk a second about billing and collecting and this part is this item will almost be over. On the pros, the city establishes the accounts. The utility fund has a minor offset 
So it says we know the water billing clerks downstairs, the billing folks are almost completely paid for by water and sewer fund. There's guaranteed collection. The city provides the customer service, whether it's through franchise or not, the city is the one that provides a service in setting up the account and handling any questions, solving any problems. Let's don't forget the fact that if we're in the billing and collection, we're paying the landfill fee. And as you saw before, there is a significant offset that goes to the residential accounts. We're responsible for auditing the service and we do offer variable payment plans. Accuracy in billing and service, reduce write-offs because we basically collect 100%. It's one comprehensive bill that you get in the end of the month. The cons, staff time and setup, increase in utility bills. It is one bill, but when you add your water and your sewer and your stormwater fee and your garbage collection fee, it becomes a pretty large bill. Financial accountability and audit trail does fall to us. Cost of sending the bills, employee turnover, Let's look at the same thing with the vendor. The pro is the vendor covers all the cost. The city is not a city function. The city's not involved. It frees the utility building staff to a minor degree. The landfill fee is paid by the vendor. It reduces your city utility bill. The vendor handles billing complaints. On the cons, it will increase the customer bill because as everyone has said, if they're not paying the stamp, every time they send out a bill, somebody has to pay for that stamp, even though they can buy, just the city gets, you know, bulk rate. Complaints, no city involvement in solving the complaints. And from my standpoint, the biggest ones are those last two. If we're not in the billing and collection we're going to take a large financial hit relative to the offset for residential accounts. And I'll remind you how that happens. We assume when we charge the landfill account, we assume that that <coughs> dumpster is full. We, we bill based upon volume, not based upon weight. When it goes to the landfill, the landfill charges us based upon weight. So let me give you an example. Mr. Warden has Bob's Burgers, actually Bob's Hot Dog Stand, okay? And his very good friend, Mr. Thomas, has Randy's Office Supply, okay? If Mr. Warden puts in heavy waste, wet waste, from a restaurant, which most restaurants' waste is wet, he can have half an eight-yard container weigh twice what Mr. Thomas's office supply dumpster weighs full. That's where we get what I call the float. That's where we get the extra because we're billing everybody based upon a full container. Everybody gets billed the same. In discussing this with waste management, waste industries, why do they have so many rates? They have an eight yard rate for an office supply, an eight yard rate for a, for a, a restaurant. Why? Because of weight, not volume. If we do go to someone else doing the billing and collecting, you will negatively impact the city financially. This has gotten rather long, so let's talk real quickly about the user meeting. We talked about quality of service, fee for service, contracting or city and free market. We had 20 people invited, we have 11 showed up. Wasn't necessarily the largest turnout. They spoke very freely and we told them we didn't want them to be rah-rah for the city. We asked them about the service and customer service level. <coughs> they gave us an overall score of 8.6 out of 10 Dependability of service, 100%. Free market opinion, only 10% of them said go free market. 
The other 90% said either city should do it directly or city should do it through franchise. But the city should not do it on the free market system. Service level, they were mixed, roughly 50-50 as far as once a week or twice a week. Recycling, they said that they could live with a nominal fee, they would prefer free, and that they think that the city should provide more containers. When it comes to our containers, what they said was, city, we're not renting our containers from you, your fee is too high. If you're gonna stay in the business and you want us to rent containers from you, you're gonna to have to bring that price down where it's much more competitive. As far as the containers themselves, the, I'm sorry, I think that's actually supposed to be as far as the service itself and the cost of the service versus the quality. What the customer said, 50% of them said cost is the most important factor, 50% of them said service <coughs> is the most important factor. They said if cost is the same, they would prefer for the city to do it. And why? Because of customer service. But I'll refresh you, go up one, they also said that 50% of them think cost is just as important as quality of service. Here's the recommendations. I believe that we should proceed to prepare bid documents. That doesn't mean the city's going to get out of the business. We're not asking you to make that decision at this point. What I'm recommending is we finalize the bid documents, that John prepares whatever ordinance changes are needed to allow you to either go on a franchise bid basis exclusive, a franchise bid basis non-exclusive, or for the city to stay in the business. But if we're gonna do other than what we're currently doing, you're going to have to have some ordinance changes. We should pre-qualify the bidders either by actually pre-qualify them or put in the bid documents specifications so it proves they can do the business. Advertise and receive bids and then come back for council direction. One question, cost of containers. Why is that legitimate criticism? We're charging more for containers than <clears throat> private vendor does? Uh, the answer is yes, and let me explain it. It doesn't cost us any more to buy a container than it does waste industries or waste management. Our rental fee was designed for us to get our investment back in a 12-month period. You know, period. The vendors are saying, no, we just soon get our money back over a three-year or five-year period. And in fairness, these things last. So if we're gonna be competitive, we need to say, okay, we're gonna get our return on our investment back over a three or four or five year period, not a one year period. What's the average life on a container? You would, I would say you would look at least 10 years. 10 years? Yes, sir. So it's a revenue source. It yes. could be a revenue source. Yes. Well, it is. Yes, sir. Mayor, that concludes our presentation. I will make sure if this is not already uploaded to your computers that you uh, get that done, that that is accomplished in the next day. I would ask you to look at the pros and cons of each of these and that if you have other pros or cons you'd like to share with the council, that you route those to the clerk so that she can route them to the whole council. Very good. Anything else? Uh, any other questions about this? Okay. All right. Yes, sir finalize the bid documents, how are they going out? Are they going out? What are, what are the terms? Twice a week service, Saturday, what is gonna be in them? Well, I the, thought we were supposed to be deciding that. Or are, giving input. Y'all are going to. You're going and to. We'll do it later. That's right. correct. What I'm gonna do is send you a questionnaire that actually says on these things, what do you think about the following language? It would really be a waste of your time might be a good educational experience for you, but to show you the all 26 pages, all you're gonna read is about indemnification and all those things that John does. What we're gonna do is send out a questionnaire that says, what do you think about this, 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 give us direction. And then at the next workshop, we're going to ask you to look at the results of your thoughts and share those thoughts together. Is that an approach that's comfortable or would you rather do it otherwise? So you're gonna send us your finalized bid documents prior to being 
bid out to, to allow us the opportunity to see I'm going to send you draft language draft on language. each of these okay. points for you to All give right. us direction on and then at the next workshop we're actually going to say okay what do you think about twice a week pickup what do you think about eliminating the performance bond is that satisfactory to you Mr. Willingham yeah only thing I was concerned about was I thought that the objective of the whole process that we were going through was to compare apples to apples the level of service that we were giving and give the private sector an opportunity to provide that service for less so to me the provisions of the the bid document we should already know because it should reflect pretty much what the level of service that we were doing well actually uh, if you say to us tonight leave it at twice a week minimum eliminate the performance bond and uh, come up with a better way of penalizing because penalizing really isn't comparing apples and apples it's I suppose it is but there there are some very basic questions in there so let's just ask them right now how do you feel about eliminating the performance bond I'm okay with that how do you feel about the minimum level of service staying at twice a week well, that was I think it should yeah. stay that way and that's the only way to compare what we were doing with what the private sector may exactly. be able to provide what but, do you but, but on the other hand there are certainly businesses that they don't need once a week well remember that's true yeah, but, but, but I thought we were supposed to be looking at comparable levels of service and who can do it better or more efficiently economically but and if you change that and you I know, I know. that's all I'm saying I just need that for the comparison what you could do is once you get that bid in as we know it's not a bid that you're required to take you could then negotiate directly with that vendor to say what if the following mm -hmm. but the purpose of the specifications as Mr. Williams pointed out is to be able you, to you compare. have to, he's, he's right you have to put the bid out with, with certain parameters you, you can't make it loosey-goosey wishy-washy negotiated type thing it has to be this is this but then I, I think you may be right maybe after that uh, we, we sit down with the apparent low bidder and and talk to them about what what can we do for for those businesses that only need once a, once a week I'd be comfortable with that okay. as far as the recycling component how do you feel about changing the exposure on the containers and simply say that we will require you to assume that you will add 15 customers per year or 15 customers for the life of the contract I'm fine with that. I think that takes that burden off that company you've thrown 15 out is that something that, that you've discussed with them are they, are they comfortable with that number 15 uh, I mean you didn't just pick 15 out of the blue did you, you did. actually uh, 15 was my baseball number in high school and college <laughs> and that's why I didn't yeah. think. but you know being but, that but, as, but as something as reasonable I mean you know you felt like okay if we put them to this minimum then then maybe they'll be willing to go out and and, and add 15 new recycling customers each year is that what you plan on doing 15 yes. per year and let me tell you where we actually got the number part of it was what I just told you the other part is this since Kerry has been uh, in charge of this program we have added already quite a number of recycling customers I believe we started at what was it 52 when we took it over how many were there well we started out at about 58 dumpster customers um, but we had a little bit less than that with the rollout customers and how many recycling customers do we have now well it's 220 no, I mean as far no, as the containers. Contain, 64. 64. 64. So yes, we've sir. added six. Six, yes. Sir. Okay. So maybe six is a better number. Six and more fifteen. Some reasonable number. We're, we're, we're in, and the commercial was was picking up the the rollouts before. That's correct. Yes, sir. And that and that, but that's increased quite a bit. The rollouts. Not 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 quite a bit, sir. It's uh, it's been level as far as the okay. roller containers okay. are concerned. We've increased the, the dumpster collection service. What the vendor said to us was <coughs> leaving it totally open just gives us too much exposure. Right. right. So who handles the rollouts? We do. The before. City. Before it was the rollouts were collected by the co uh, the vendor. Okay. The contractor. My concern about the recyclables is 
not having any kind of requirement, I think it really sets us back. As far as our environmental efforts, I was here when we started the recycling, and so I know the hurdle that it was to get residential recycling up and, and running to the point where it's um, not even, you know, people just do it. Um, so I, I think that should definitely be a component of it in a way that encourages people to do more and not do less. I agree, and I think one of the biggest issues, you'd have more if there was uh, capacity for, for those dumpsters. A lot of the places, like in our, in our restaurant, we're using about three or four of the blue containers where we could easily use a big container, but there's no room. Uh, whereas at the you know design company, we have a big container and we use it. So I think it's an issue of space. But I agree with, with Mr. Willingham, we should promote it. I mean, we need to promote it. You know, it's something we might look at from our site plan standpoint. Maybe we need to, to require an additional, additional space in there. We are now. But we've got all the old right, customers. I, I say we are now. Is yes, part sir. of the new UDO? Yes, or sir. Is that part of that? Or? Yes, sir. We, Carrie, is that not correct? We're requiring dumpsters for trash and recycling? That's correct. Okay. Yes. okay. Yeah, right. We, I understand we, that we've yeah. got to write the existing. Yeah. I understand. That's what's limiting it for the new, for the old customers. And I definitely think it should go out without our um, billing that, that's <laughs> incumbent upon them. I'll say that it's again. Just, you, you, didn't, you didn't read this memo, sense. obviously. Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah, you need to. But, but you know, that, even that bothers me. I mean, what is it? Well, the next question is, who's going to do the billing and collecting? Do you want us to put that in for them to do the billing and collecting, or for us to do the billing and collecting? Um, I, I, I was trying to be quiet, but I, I, I didn't see this memo. I don't know how I missed this one. Did this come on an email? I, I, guess I, I hid it from you. You did it? Okay, okay. And you're going to spring it on me. Well, I mean, he's telling us, he's telling us that we've been, we've been complaining about doing the billing when it's been making us $250,000 a year. Right. Because of the, because of the because waste. Because of the waste. Factor. Because of the, the flat fee we're charging from the landfill, okay. we're collecting $250,000 more dollars a year then we're paying them, and you're talking about quitting? Well, the billing? I don't think anybody's no. okay. 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 So has this year's experience really cost us $500,000? Yes, it's made it worse. Because if you're saying our endeavor is going to run a $250,000 negative when it was running a $250,000 positive, that's probably Gale? that's not well, that, figured into no, this program. That's, that's not, 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 not at all. That hasn't no. changed. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yes. Yes. Calm down. Your well. blood pressure is back down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I gotta go take a pill. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. okay. The, the right, and that's, not, that's no different than before because we've been doing the even when when waste management was doing it, we were still doing the, the yes. same. I understand. Right. That. Yeah. I understand that, but I'm just saying when I read that, you know, I yeah. got to get it straight in my mind. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, believe me, uh, if you want to actually look at it this way. The commercial garbage has actually not lost a penny. No, you, we would have two hundred fifty thousand dollars more today than we would have if we had not gone there. Don't yeah. tell me that. That's good. Okay. okay, I won't tell you that. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. What else but you have? That's it. <laughs> but then I have a I have an issue with the, the fairness of the commercial side. I mean, you know, is you know we've had this we've had some similar discussions about you know what's what's fair and who pays the, their fair share. And, you know, are we are we penalizing our commercial customers uh, for the benefit of our residential customers? Obviously, we are. But is that something we want to continue, or, or do we want to change it? Richard, uh, one question: The city would your in, your thought process would be the city would bid in accordance with the bid document, just like you're asking any of the folks to correct Maybe a cost estimate. Thank you. 
I think we have the direction that uh, that we needed. If you want to add any pros and cons to us, we'd appreciate it. Um, Submit them via email. Yeah. <laughs> Move for adjournment. Second. All in favor? All right.